Hey guys, so I am still on the bathroom floor. I'm feeling a little bit better now, but I'm, and I'm, but I'm, I'm technically still on the bathroom floor of, uh, yeah, of, of my, my gym. So in this episode, we are going to have to go light again, because I don't have the energy to try to go high energy, so we'll just keep it the normal energy. So today we are going to talk about code optimization. Now, and not just any type of code optimization, we are going to talk about developer code optimization. So let's get into it. Now, this is, of course, a highly like weird subject. So let me just elaborate a little bit. The other day I was talking to my, my man crush, basically. It's not Alan, I swear. It's not him. He's my soulmate. This is my man crush. At my current company, I have this guy, there's this guy working there. His name is Hong Xiao, and he is a genius, like a, a genius, genius to the, like, a genius to the point where I wonder if they bred him in a lab. I, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure. I, I, he, he seems so human, but then he sits down and writes software and, and I, I, I don't understand how he, do, how he does it. Anywho, so we start, we start talking about this age-old controversial thing that we developers have been fighting over since... I, I don't know. I don't know how long we've been fighting over it. Loosely typed languages versus strictly typed languages. And so we talk because we, we, we have this discussion and we talk about these different high profile developers that you know about and they usually promote and some of them very fairly opinionatedly promote one thing or the other. And we come to the consensus, if you will, that perhaps these people are fighting from very different positions. Just let me walk you through it. So on average, I hear a lot of the people who sp speak for like loosely typed languages, they, they are really keen on saying, uh, telling, like talking about productivity and how easy it is for them to, to build things or how fast they can be in a loosely typed language. And what the typed language people will tell you, at least from my experience, is that they talk about types as being this rigorously awesome thing to have, especially when you're changing code all the time and that sort of thing, like when you have really large projects. And I agree, I've been working, and you see, I've been working in both, in both types. And it, I had this, I don't know, let's call it an epiphany as I was talking to my co a coworker and I tried to explain it to him and I said, if you think about that, that's two different types of people fighting over which language is, you know, the best or which, which, which approach is the best, but they're not in the same boat because the, the loosely typed people are talking from the perspective of a small, small product, usually, or a mid-sized product, where all the issues that you find in really large enterprise code bases are not actually all that present. They haven't, like the code base hasn't grown to the point where you start having these types of issues that you face at a corporate level. This is not a rule, of course, but that's generally the, the situation that I, as I perceive it. And the t strictly typed people are usually arguing from the perspective of like people who are trying to write really high quality software. So, they are not arguing from the perspective that, hey, prototyping and like innovation and trying to iteration speed, that sort of thing. Which means that they're arguing about two different situations. And my coworker is like, yeah, if you, if you really think about it. And then he says this beautiful thing that made me want to make this video. He says that, well, if you think about it, maybe that's what code optimization is about. And I kind of ask him, what, what do you mean code optimization? Well, I mean that the, when you're in the early stages of the project, the loosely typed approach is perhaps more optimized for, for that sort of work. Like you, you, you might actually find that that's actually, like having a loosely typed language at small scale might actually help you produce more software. It's optimized for a certain context. And when you're at really large scale, you, you optimize for a different thing. And I said, well, okay, can you walk and give me an example? And he said, well, if you think about it, one makes sense where the other wouldn't make sense. 
and I kind of it, it kind of clicked in, in my head and I started I mean I had this realization what I realized was that he's right like if you think about it at, at small scale you usually write fresh code for the most part greenfield project your own personal projects your prototypes that for, sort sort of thing you're writing code from scratch in other words you're, you're, you're trying things out. You don't really know how things are going to end, end up. But in a really, really large code base, you don't really do that all that often. For the most part, you're simply changing code. And you know that I've been telling you for quite a while that changing code is like having types when you change code all the time gives you a, a much higher level of certainty that you didn't break something. It's actually much, it's a, a lot easier to make ref, refactor and change existing code if you have types. It's very tricky to do that if you have a, a loosely typed language, especially JavaScript. Oh dear God, that's, that's scary. And so perhaps, the question, I, perhaps this is an optimization question, when you should pick one over the other, like maybe loosely typed languages are actually the best choice you can make at small scale. And strictly typed languages may be the best choice at large scale. And the, the question I want to leave you with that I can't really answer f at all is whether or not that's something you should consider when you start. Because imagine this, imagine if, like, if you know for a fact that you are going to build a system that is going to become an enterprise system, you're building something that is, like, even if it's just your own project, even if it's just the smallest little thing in the world, but the goal is to make it a large, large co company. Then there's no, like, the, the, you, then maybe starting with a strictly typed language, even if it's not going to give you a lot of iteration speed in the beginning, is the way to go. But if you're building something which you don't even know if it's going to be a thing, you have no idea what the end goal is going to be, or you are building a small application for yourself, like a website or something like that, then it makes more sense perhaps to do that in a loosely typed language. Now this is of course subjective, it depends on you as well. I mean, if you're a specialist Java person, for example, and you've never worked in PHP, why, why would you learn PHP in order to, to do, you know, to, to be able to build your thing, right? That doesn't make sense. I'm just trying to share this holistic mindset that perhaps there are like the, the, the goal of the project is what's going what should determine which approaches you, you pick because it seems that the they the that decision is going to optimize your code base for different types of styles of working or it's going to optimize it for different things it's just a thought and i hope you enjoyed this video have a great day